What is the lesson, the teaching? What are the symbols, the archetypes and sacred numbers? The unifying element in this Sufi stories and on what secret does it rest? There was a very rich merchant who was also a noble and he had three strapping handsome sons who he was justifiably proud of but the light of his eyes was his daughter Shirin. Now Shirin was beautiful lustrous brown eyes black hair that cascaded down her back but his indulgences and his coddling of her made her vain, self-centered and very often demanding and petulant. Now her brothers would oftentimes tease her to try to draw her out of this centeredness in herself and her vanity but really to no avail even her mother was unable to draw her away from the mirror that she spent a lot of time sitting in front of preening herself but Shirin came to the age of 17 and it was time for her father Ali Khan to find a suitable husband for her. So he invited nobles and princes from the neighboring realms to come and feast at his table so that his daughter Shirin could choose amongst them for her husband. But because of the treatment of her father none of these young men could measure up who could love her, adulate her, take care of her like her father did. So all those who came around were treated with scorn. But one day her mother was with her and asked her why can you not choose amongst any of these handsome rich young men and she said none of them measure up why should I leave here when my father takes care of me but her mother got very angry and frustrated so she left the room leaving Shirin on her own but suddenly a darkness came over the room as though the room was filled with shadow and then in that darkness Shirin saw a shimmering figure wearing green encrusted with emeralds and then this being spoke in a voice that sounded like the wind blowing in the trees Shirin, Shirin it is time for you to leave your father's house and be wed it is the process of life that one progresses becomes a wife, a mother But Shirin, regaining her senses, being overwhelmed by this presence, said, but none of them would take care of me like my father. And then the shimmering presence said, there is one amongst these young men 
who loves you and will give you much more than your father can give. Look, and out of the window, in the light of the garden, Shirin saw a handsome young man, long leather boots, a fur hat on his head, <coughs> bow and arrow across his shoulder. That is he, said the fleeting wind-like voice, and then it disappeared and light came back in to the room again. Now, the very next day, her father had a great feast for all of the suitors to come, and while she Shirin was there, she looked at this being who had been pointed out to her by her visitor. And she asked, who is that young man? And someone said, oh, that is Nadia Ali. So after the Reception was over. She went to her father and she said, I have chosen my husband. It is Nadia Ali. Well, her father was very pleased because Nadia Ali was just the one that he would have chosen to be her husband. He was noble, he was rich. He was known for his kindness, generosity. So the wedding was arranged and they were wed. Now when Shirin went to her husband's house, which was the custom, at first the attention that was given to her was just like that of her father. She was indulged, she was praised. But it wasn't too long before she became her demanding and petulant self. And of course, her husband, noting this, was not at all happy. And the love that he felt for her began to recede until one day when they were in their bedchamber, he said, you know, you are grown up now. You are a wife. It is time to drop your childish ways and become that which is now there for you to be. But things got worse day after day. She continued to be moody, demanding and petulant, and the love of her husband abated more and more. He went hunting more. He went out and to visit other places, to be away from the home more and more. But then one day, when Nadir Ali had departed on one of his journeys, when Shirin was in her chamber, darkness came over the room once again, and there was the shimmering being. What is it that troubles you, Shirin? said the mellifluous voice of her visitor. Why do you not treat your husband with consideration and love that's befitting of him? And Shirin began to weep, tears rolling down her face. 
And she said, I don't know how to love him. And with that, the shimmering being came over to her and tapped her on the chest. And there was a bing! Oh, said the shimmering being, your heart is made of glass. Oh, said Shirin, how do I have a glass heart? Why do I have a glass heart? And the shimmering being said, it often happens for those who are fixated on themselves, are vain and self-centered that the evil ones take their heart and replace it with glass. For some who don't use their mind, the mind is taken away and replaced with glass. Or If the senses are not followed, then the hips are taken and are replaced with glass. How can I, how can I find my true heart? said Shirin. Oh, said the shining being, this is not an easy thing to do you must follow exactly what I tell you to do. I'll do anything, said she, I'll do anything to be happy, to know love. So the shining being said, first you must become silent for three moons. Speak not a word. Then, give up all your fancy garments. Give your jewelry away to the poor. Work beside your servants as they work. But what if I can't do it? What if I can't do it? said Shirin. But the shining being just gave an enigmatic smile and disappeared in the darkness that had filled the room departed. Now Shirin began. She started to work with her servants. She discarded all the fancy silks and satins she stopped looking in the mirror. She gave her jewelry away to the poor. She started <coughs> to sew, embroider a beautiful vest for her husband. But she was silent. She spoke not a word. So all around her, including her husband, thought that she'd been inflicted by some spell. And her mother-in-law often said to her husband, Nadir Ali, your wife is bedeviled. Send her back to her father. But Nadir Ali, even though the love in his heart had receded. When he saw his wife silent, unresponsive, he felt great pity and compassion for her. And 
he had heard that in a far distant place there was a physician, a shaman, who was renowned for his abilities to heal such afflictions. So he decided that he would make this arduous journey on behalf of his wife. So preparations were made. Two moons had passed and Shirin found it very difficult to maintain and sustain the actions that were so against what it was that had been her persona before. But she began to notice things in ways she hadn't before. The flowers in the garden, the feeling of the soil in her hands when she dug, the texture of the flower when she was kneading, the bread. And then came the day when her husband was to leave on his journey, on her behalf. She watched as his horse was brought, saddled, packed, ready for his journey, standing, looking out of her window, when suddenly she began to feel something inside of her. A sound, a, a sound, like the sound of a soprano beginning to sing a high, high note. And then she found herself dashing out of her room down to where Lady Ali was just about to put his leg over his horse when there was a great crack like the sound of that crystal glass when the soprano hit that high note. And Shirin grabbed the leg in the stirrup of Nadir Ali's horse and said, Don't go, Nadir Ali. I love you. Nadir Ali jumped down from his horse, embraced his wife, lifted her up in his arms and carried her back into their house. We know the end of this story. But again, it's asked of you. What is the lesson? What are the sacred numbers, symbols and archetypes? What is the unifying element? And what is it? What secret is it that this and all other stories rest upon? What is its lesson? Its teaching. 